your name. Merry Christmas. It is wonderful to have each one of you here tonight. What a wonderful reason to celebrate people around the world, around our country, around our community are gathering in settings somewhat like this because of a very special event that took place over 2,000 years ago. Uh, the Savior is born. Amen. It was almost 150 years ago that one of America's uh, most well-known poets wrote a poem. Henry Wadsworth Longfellow wrote a poem that a number of years later became a Christmas carol that I'm sure you've heard a number of times already this season. I'd like to share just a little bit of the context of, of the setting in which Henry wrote that poem. It was Christmas Day, 1864. Our country was in the midst of the great Civil War, and, and the Civil War would go for a number of months after he had penned these words. But personally, Henry Wadsworth Longfellow has had undergone some traumatic events in his own personal life. A number of months before he wrote these words, his wife Frances had died from a fire uh, that had uh, kind of a freak accident where she was using some wax and it got on her dress and the dress caught on fire and, and she literally died in his arms. Just prior to writing these words, he had gotten word that his son, who insisted on enlisting in the Union Army against his will, uh, had been severely wounded in the, in the war and his recovery was in doubt. So on Christmas Day, Henry Wadsworth Longfellow wrote these words. I heard the bells on Christmas Day, their old familiar carols play, and mild and sweet the words repeat, say it with me, of peace on earth, good will to men. He goes on, and I thought how as the day had come, the belfries of all Christendom had rolled along with the unbroken song of peace on earth, good will to men. Till ringing, singing on its way, the world revolved from night to day. A voice, a chime, a chant sublime, say it with me, of peace on earth, good will toward men. And then from each black accursed mouth, the cannon thundered in the south. And with the sound, the carols drowned. Say it with me, of peace on earth, good will toward men. It was as if an earthquake rent, the hearthstones of the continent had been made forlorn, the households born of peace on earth, good will toward men. And in despair, I bowed my head. There is no peace on earth, I said. For hate is strong and mocks the song, say it with me, of peace on earth, good will toward men. That was 150 years ago. We still long for that peace. We still hope for that peace, but we come tonight to celebrate because the Prince of Peace has been born, and he has come. And the greatest peace that he brings is what we can all experience right here, right now. That's peace with God and the peace of God that only Jesus Christ can bring. I love how the poem ends, how the carol ends. Then pealed the bells more loud and deep. God is not dead, nor doth he sleep. The wrong shall fail, the right prevail. Say it with me. With peace on earth, good will toward men. God is not dead. He is not asleep. He is present among us, and we have the wonderful privilege of worshiping together. Will you pray with me? Father God, thank you so much for a reason to celebrate, and a reason to celebrate not just this night, but every, 
every night, every moment of our life, that Christ has come, Emmanuel, to be with us and even to be in us. Lord, would you be, please be blessed and glorified tonight as we sing and as we reflect, as we spend time together. We pray in Christ. Amen. A wonderful time of celebration has been planned, and uh, our Advent candles will be lit with just a reminder of what we, as a church family here at SK to First Baptist, enjoy. There'll be some special songs, so I trust you'll enjoy it. I'll invite the Addisons to come and light the first candle. Hello, my name is Jeremy Adamson. This is my wife, Nicole, and our oldest daughter, Emma, is away with some family this evening. This is our son, Tucker, and this is our youngest daughter, Maggie. The first candle we're going to light tonight represents God's sovereignty. I'm going to read from Galatians 4, verses 4 and 5. But when the fullness of the time came, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law, so that he might redeem those who were under the law, that we might receive the adoption as sons.
I'm Nellie Lieberman. Is it okay? You got it. Okay. <laughs> and the second candle represents man's problem. And I'm going to read from Romans 3, 9 through 12. What shall we conclude then? Are we any better? Not at all. We have already made the charge that Jews and Gentiles alike are all under sin. As it is written, there is no one righteous, not even one. There is no one who understands, no one who seeks God. All have turned away. They have together become worthless. There is no one who does good, not even one. Thank you.
My name is Randy Wheeler, and this is my daughter Jessica, my wife Carrie, and my son Jimmy. All right, our third candle represents God's solution, and this is seen in Titus 3, 5 through 7. He saved us, not on the basis of deeds which we have done in righteousness, but according to his mercy, by the washing of of regeneration and renewing by the Holy Spirit, whom he poured upon us richly through Jesus Christ, our Savior.
we're just going to invite you guys to join us now as we continue to worship in song. We've got another candle to light. But from here on out, uh, we'd just like to invite you guys to sing with us. This is my son Jared, my wife Allison, my daughter Brooklyn, mom Carmen, dad John, and the rest of the Bresco clan couldn't fit up here. <laughs> the fourth candle represents God's messengers. I'll be reading from the second chapter of Luke, verses 9 through 11. And an angel of the Lord suddenly stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone all around them. And they were terribly frightened. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy, which will be for all the people.
be the place we fix our life, be the center of our life. Sing, turn your eyes upon Jesus. So turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look for Thank you very much, musicians. I think it would be appropriate to just give them a round of applause. Thank you so much for that. What a wonderful way to just begin to bring this to a conclusion, that reminder that Christ uh, deserves the center place. You know, as I... I was thinking earlier, I don't know how many years as a church family we've celebrated Advent together and we would light four candles four weeks leading up. And, and through the years, all of the, these, these four candles have changed. We, we've used different portions of Scripture and, and they've always been different. But the center candle is always the same, isn't it? The center candle is always Christ because without Christ at the center, really... Nothing makes any sense. And I think we really do learn that in our lives. Not only things don't really make any sense without a solid center, uh, there's really no stability. Think about this last year and all that's changed in your life. Think of the people that are no longer a part of your life. Think of the health situations that have changed or financial ups and downs. Just think of all the changes over this last year. What has remained the same? Or who has remained the same? Christ. He's the center. It's just, we get so distracted and, and we seem to put the other issues, the other people, the other circumstances in the center of our lives and and when we do that, I know we've all learned we're always disappointed, aren't we? Because those things never give the satisfaction that Christ can give. Christ is the center. 2,000 years ago when God came to be among us, he didn't come to be a hobby in our lives. He didn't come to be somebody that we go and sing about once or twice a year. He came to be the center. That's the place he rightfully deserves, amen? When he died on the cross, uh, everything came right down in history to that point in time, and he is the center of the universe. Right now, we live in between two advents. He's already come once. He came as a child, and of course, we're celebrating that year after year, but he didn't remain as a child. He, he grew, he lived, he died, he rose again. And now we're waiting for his second advent. It'll be different the second time. No longer a child, no longer the lamb. When he comes back again, he comes as the lion. The lion of the tribe of Judah to bring justice and to bring everything to its rightful end. And at that moment, every eye and mind and heart will be riveted on the person of Jesus Christ. We have that privilege now to have our hearts and our minds riveted on the person of Jesus Christ. May it be so. In the book of Hebrews, chapter 12, uh, after chapter 11 in Hebrews, where it lists all of these very famous people of faith, 
It's interesting what the writer of Hebrews does. He, it's like he, he forgets all about those people that he just talked about, all the great feats of faith that they exhibited in their lives. And he says, just like the song we sang, uh, fix your eyes on Jesus. The author, that means the beginning. The perfecter, that means the end of your faith. He is the beginning of the end. He says, fix your eyes on Jesus, the author and the perfecter of your faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross and despised the shame and is right now sitting down at the right hand of God the Father. And then it says, fix your eyes there so that you do not grow weary in your life. No doubt, many of us have come here today with lives that are torn and scattered and confused. And uh, the best thing that I can offer you tonight, without a doubt, is the person of Jesus Christ. If you're a follower of Jesus already, just what a, what a great time for all of us just to refocus again that he is the reason, he is the purpose, he is the center. We will be disappointed if we fix our attention anywhere else. The musicians are going to sing just a couple more songs and we're going to close our Christmas Eve service the way that we always do by the singing of Silent Night and you'll be able to light those candles and It'll just be a wonderful reminder as, as these candles are lit from the one center candle that, that when, when the light is in us and that light consumes us and we share that in our lives wherever we go, then, then things really begin to light up and God is glorified in a great way. Let's pray and I'll invite the musicians to come back up. Father God, thank you so much for a time tonight to refocus, to recenter, to be reminded again that, that it's you that we adore. Lord, forgive us for so often in our lives becoming distracted and, and, and uh, forgive us for allowing other people and other things to, to grab that center. Lord Jesus, we turn back to you consume us. Lord, even as this song says, Lord, we adore you. We worship you because only you are worthy of that in our lives. Go come all ye faithful joyful and try
Bagley up, and he's going to lead us in our closing song tonight. And as he does, we're going to um, light the candles from the center of the Christ candle. And uh, we're just going to pass that along. I'll just keep passing it. And, uh, and uh, then we'll pray to close the service up. We will sing it one more time, it's okay. <laughs> what a beautiful sight to see all of those candles and obviously the very obvious truth is as Christ becomes a part of our lives and we live this place, we take that light with us. Uh, what a privilege it is to be able to share that light, to share Christ, not share religion. There's enough religion in the world. There's too much religion in the world, uh, but not enough Christ. So may we be uh, channels of that light and share that light. And uh, it certainly is a dark place as we go out into the world. So let's take that light with us. Let's sing that first verse one more time together. Here we go. Silent. Jesus, thank you so much for living in us, for coming to us. 
So Juvie's, uh, please just be pleased to, to shine through us even as we leave this place. As we celebrate your birth, may we present you very boldly to others, we pray for your sake. Can you say amen to that? Amen. amen. Merry Christmas. God bless you as you go. <laughs>